I'm stood next to the latest version of Dancing with Dandelions. But before I reveal her to you, I want to tell you the story of Dancing with Dandelions. I remember somewhere being in, a, in an art gallery where I actually saw a, a painting of a dandelion with all of the seeds blowing away. Uh, and I've been making fairies for a while and I thought, could I actually make a dandelion out of wire uh, and actually have the seeds connected and blowing away? But having made a dandelion, probably about sort of six or eight inches diameter, I thought it'd be quite cool to have a fairy sort of blowing a dandelion. Uh, and one of those uh, is, a, is actually at Trenton Gardens. I sort of thought if a fairy is the actual size that people believe that they would be, perhaps a dandelion would be slightly bigger in relationship to the fairy. So I thought I'll, I'll actually make a fairy hanging onto a dandelion rather than blowing it. I actually offered the village, if they give me somewhere to put one, that I would make one just for the village to have. Uh, and the village said that I could put one on the village hall. Inspired by this photograph of the lady hanging onto the umbrella, this isn't the photograph that, that, that actually was the inspiration, but it was something very similar to this. I made this sort of fairy hanging onto this dandelion and it was I called it blown away. Effectively, that was the birth of a fairy with a dandelion been born for, for that purpose. Although I'd spotted it myself, a friend of mine pointed out that if she was fighting the wind in that way, her wings would have folded round. I wasn't brave enough at the time to, to, to actually do that. So this is the first copy of the one that became known as Dancing with Dandelions. I actually called it One O'Clock Wish. Uh, one O'Clock Wish being children blow dandelions and make a wish and also, uh, when I was a child, I was told that you could actually tell the time by blowing a dandelion clock and how many blows it would take would, would sort of tell you the time. Some of the, 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 the fairies that I've made, it's difficult to sort of present a sculpture which is three-dimensional with a two-dimensional photograph sometimes. Uh, and I tried sort of moving around uh, the, the figure with a video to actually capture it. The problem with that is you've generally got one sort of good vantage point to, to actually have as a backdrop. And when you move around so the, the vantage point is behind you, you've got a pretty ugly busy scene in the foreground. So I decided to reverse that challenge and have the sculpture turn so I could keep the same backdrop and turn the sculpture while I was actually shooting the video. And that's why the sculpture started to move. It wasn't necessarily that I was trying to make some wind-blown kinetic sculpture. It was I just wanted to show them off to best effect. It just happened to suit that when I made One O'Clock Wish, she's fighting the wind and she turns in the wind in order to be able to photograph it. The combination was, was sort of quite a powerful one. Now, when I first made One O'Clock Wish, I imagined that he, although I'd put it on a bearing so I could turn it and take the video, that she would be sort of too heavy to move because they, they actually weigh probably about 10 or 15 kilograms when they, when they finished. Uh, but the opposite is true. The weight uh, and the surface area actually helps and they just move very slowly. They just move in the wind and it looks extremely graceful, work, work to treat. So one o'clock wish was born. Having worked with Trentham Gardens, uh, I you know, was working on a sort of commission for them to do for their 10th anniversary. Now, I wanted to do a sort of one o'clock wish themed fairy, but I wanted to make it life size and just the physics of making something that heavy, I didn't think I could make it turn in the wind. Uh, that, that fairy proved to be very popular proved to be very significant in the history of Fantasy Wire. Uh, a lady called Jo Fitzpatrick took a photograph of Wishes at Trenton. Uh, I shared that and it triggered us to go viral. This was in 2014. 
Uh, now, that was the trigger. Uh, when we got so much attention on our sort of Facebook page and our website, uh, there were so many photographs and videos of fairies that it sort of exploded with, with the attention that we got. I was, I went from having 4,000 people following me on Facebook to 70 odd thousand within a couple of days. And it was actually all of the articles that people were writing about us at the time were entitled things like fairies dancing with dandelions. And that's where the actual name came from. So here's an illustration of one of them, which was from Board Panda on, on, at the time. So Dancing with Dandelions was born, as it were. Uh, the design itself has got sort of everything in it. I, I'm not sure I'll ever beat that design. It's got the, you can see the power of the wind. You can see the fact that she's putting resistance into it. It sort of has emotion. There's a struggle involved, there's a story. And it's also a kinetic sculpture, which is figurative, which is actually quite rare. Kinetic sculptures are normally some abstract sort of windmilly type thing. So it's sort of, I just think the combination of everything that's come together has, has made that extremely popular. This is Dancing Dandelions Nouveau. She's called Nouveau because it's French for new and updated. So I've remade her with all of the new techniques and the lessons that I've learned along the way and I think she's pretty special and even today 99% of all requests for my work want a copy of Dancing with Dandelions so much so that she's become iconic and we changed the company logo to be uh, the image of Dancing with Dandelions and that's trademark protected so I suppose that there's an obvious question as to why don't I just make loads of copies of Dancing with Dandelions. Well, I've, I've never been motivated by money. And I also recognized at the time uh, that I was just starting out with my career as a sort of wire sculpture. That if, if I just make multiple copies of this, I'm gonna dilute its value and I'm not sure I'll ever beat that design. Uh, so I actually want to limit it. And I'm never going to make more than, say, 10 or 12 copies of Dancing with Dandelions. And this one, I think, is the sixth. Uh, so, you know, it will always be a limited edition of Dancing with Dandelions. And that's the story. She's quite significant. I'm not sure I'll ever beat that design. 